by the way, none of this is a, I don't hate technology. I'm not a Luddite, you know, I use technology and stuff. But when I see it beginning to kind of sinisterly substitute for experience, um, as I'll demonstrate tonight, then I just think it's time to kind of pay attention. That's all. Kindle. How much more transparent in its ambitions can the name of a product be? Not only is the Kindle opting to replace the lovely, comforting ritual of cradling a book, serenely turning its crisp pages, entering into an ancient pact with papyrus, but what it also does with rapacious audacity is advertise the inevitability of the book's extinction and even suggest the best way to accomplish this decisive elimination. Burn your books, it seems to hiss. Our snazzy little techno prism Kindle has got your back on this one. That's all. That's it. All for Kindle. Okay. We'll come back to it. A nook. If a nook could speak, it would probably say, okay, so we too are pushing for a massive biblio annihilation, but at least our ingenious surrogate actually rhymes with the real thing. And what a cozy chasm of a noun it is. Nook. No longer need one curl up in an illuminated corner to get lost in a good book, for we have combined the nuanced richness of both these rituals into a single gadget. We've gone and hijacked the sentimental connotations of an intimate ceremony and made it into a nifty product, devoid of personality. We win. <laughs> watching someone read one is like watching an electroshock patient in a bookstore, engrossed in the blurb on the back of the book, but never opening the damn thing up and diving into it, resulting in a robotic, non-committal waltz, forever on the threshold of tangible engagement. Zombieland, baby. Same deal with Twitters and tweets. When beaks and feathers are involved, these two punchy verbs serve to amplify the otherworldly beauty of Mother Nature's inexhaustible charms. They are the cadences of gratitude emanating from the little hearts of awe-stricken birds, chronicling a divine inventory, lest we humans forget just how good we have it. Twitters and tweets in human terms, however, are only there to keep the populace distracted by keeping tabs on where and what some famous swish bag is drinking at that moment. I coined that one for you. Swish bag? Twitter duh and Twitter dumb. Oh, sorry. Twitter duh and Tweedle dumb. iPods. When the Sony Walkman came onto the scene about what seems like a hundred years ago, it really wasn't such a terrible thing. Sure, it created a minor disconnect between individuals and their sonic surroundings. But there was something almost magical about popping in a Chet Baker or a Van Morrison tape and walking around in the light rain and letting the tunes wash over you, transforming the landscape, whether urban or rural, into a more personalized Joycean or Seussian soundscape, muffling the busy world to a more manageable level. It was a pleasant luxury and more often than not turned an uneventful straw into a more meaningful and memorable endeavor. And if the Walkman wound up massacring, massacring your cassette, as it sometimes did, you would slide over to FM radio and let some unexpected song spontaneously delight you. Other than the occasional coma-inducing or limb-losing crossing the street or railroad tracks and not hearing the inrushing cab or caboose kind of snafu, there was no real harm done. Enter the iPod. Now, thanks to the permanent high tide of entitlement, wherever you arrive, whether a party or a funeral, you will always have your very own comprehensive musical archive right at your fingertips. Whatever your endeavor, a push of the button will supply you with the perfect backdrop of atmospheric control. Here in America, we like our musical libraries portable and our pesky immigrants deportable. <laughs> For in this jazzy little rectangle exists a galaxy of atmospheric options that will no longer enhance or elevate your mood, but rather, like all ruthless petty tyrants, it dictates your narrative. It tells your story for you. What was once a luxury is now a demand, an electrified necessity, something adults, teens, tweens, and eventually toddlers and infants will no longer be able to function without. So when an individual isn't slaving over a hot iPod, another way he will be exploring his techno options is via his iPhone, basking in the Lilliputian Martian glow of his spanking new app. Just a few years ago, our cultural obsession used to be with building our abs. But now it's all about acquiring new apps. Check out my killer apps, dude. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Yikes, I'm actually nostalgic for the heydays of macho vanity. This is what technology can do to a peep.
As I phrased it on Facebook a few months back, I find it striking, depressing, and slyly devastating that everywhere you go these days, there are always clusters of individuals hunched over their cell phones and other assorted anti-solitude gadgets who are not taking visceral inventory of their environs. It is naive and ultimately self-destructive destructive to believe that there will be no colossal consequences, spiritual and or ontological, in the nearest of futures. Am I pacing okay? Should I slow it down a little bit? A little interpretive haiku dancing in between? Yes! 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 yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> the other day on Facebook, which I frequent for strictly anthropologically penetrative purposes, I posted as my status, Satan wants you to be friends on Facebook. <laughs> to which one of my Rye pals immediately replied with, R-O-F-L-M-F-A-O. <laughs> <laughs> Which is as eloquent a rebuttal as, say, the little swivel-headed vomit diva, Linda Blair from The Exorcist, could have mustered. <laughs> <laughs> Such acronyms as these are clearly Lucifer's hieroglyphs. Whenever I see LOL, I brusquely insert CIC, crying in corner. <laughs> Sometimes CIFC when I want to get passionate. We no longer find reality TV adequate to supply us with the spectacle of those emotional meltdowns that make us feel better about our own lives. We have become a nation of voyeuristic vultures whose favorite hobby blood sport is to circle the psychological carcasses of others, preferably celebrities, but anyone extremely attractive or thoroughly unsightly will do too and to feed on their humbled innards in order to distract us from our own existential crises, whatever they may be. TV is great for that. Reality TV is better, but Facebook takes the vicarious cake. By saying something warm, tender, or hallmark cliche horrific, we can triumphantly cultivate a feeling of artificial altruism and actually believe it is an act of noble empathy, unique to the genuinely compassionate. When in reality, it is at best a Disney sideshow fantasy camp in which your shattered friend is now the lucky beneficiary of your wishy-washy chivalry. But more often than not, after countless cries for emotional help, the person with the plethora of depressing posts will receive no comments at all, or even worse, a smattering of folks will like that he cannot see anything but the bleakness of life and is looking for a painless exit. <laughs> I have recently been powering through Howard Zinn's People's History of the United States, which tells in a reversal of perspective the story of American history through the loser's eyes. 400 pages in, I could not help but notice how eerily familiar and apt these patterns of control and denial still are. More specifically, the divisive and wretched relationship of labor to capital that many of the courageous and visionary brothers and sisters of our American soil had warned us about in the 1900s and beyond Upton Sinclair, Emma Goldman, Eugene Debs, Sojourner Truth, Joe Hill, Dos Passos, Steinbeck, Woody Guthrie, Helen Keller, and Jack Lind London, to name a few, can now be said to have its analogous corollary in Facebook. Under the giddy guise of social cooperation, we are the pivotal instruments of a monstrous corporation. The boundaries between private property and intellectual property are dissipating as we speak. Communication, thanks to Facebook, is now synonymous with consumerism. This inseparable relationship between personality and product could not be more vibrantly illustrated than it, is, than it is by what I call the Facebook margin police. If, for instance, I write the phrase anti-solitude gadgets in my thread, an ad for gadgets pops up like a panting, blind, lonely dog who no one will play, play fetch with. I once typed the letters PS as in postscript, and seconds later, an ad for P.S. I Love You on iTunes jumped out of nowhere like a stalker on stilts. All right, and here's our last uh, nugget of the evening. Uh, <clears throat> this kind of just encapsulates all the previous ruminations of the essay into a poem form. Technology is a space hooker in sad tights. Religion is a rugged songbird who has lost its nest. Society is a gathering of slaves and former slaves. Teachers are the conduits for a busted sacrament. Lawyers are gods of compromise. Athletes are fragments of death's laughter. Philosophers are both the welcome mats 
and only obstacles to imminent suicide. <coughs> Doctors are messy dreamers who sterilize chaos. Politicians are assassins with parameters. Knowledge is wisdom playing dead. Dignity is a Cub Scout in a pup tent surrounded by celebrity silhouettes. Orgasm is the perfect marriage of meaningful and meaningless. That was random. <laughs> Incest is an investment in a lifetime supply of bad luck. Self-pity self is vanity's kid sister. Sexuality is the most vague and most tangible of prerogatives. Email is the sweatpants of letter writing. <laughs> Children are weightless replicas of their parents' sustained crisis. Cell phones are boomerangs for the disingenuous. Facebook is nostalgia's toxic landfill. Humility is a paper bag lunch with copious wet spots. Pride is a little too much to ask for. Emptiness is in the head. The mailman is a ghost of forgotten intimacy. An anthropologist is an apologist for time's tyranny. An astrologist is a gypsy on toy stilts. Marriage is a novel melding of ancient vulnerabilities. Truth is a duck spluttering in rudderless circles. Science holds a candle to mystery. Love is a bag of perfect sand. Humanity is a pastiche of ashes. Gratitude, as it turns out, is God. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it.